say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in Farmer's Kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate right here in Farmer's Kitchen. In town, Farmer's Country Kitchen. Cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Well, good afternoon, Nikki. Good afternoon. It's a beautiful day. Yes, it is. It's above freezing. Uh huh. It actually is warm. Which is kind of good. Right. Um, there is something a little different this time. We've been gone a couple of weeks. Right. Not on purpose, but I do have a broken, broken arm. Now I can't lift this arm, as you know, but my existing wound. 30 years ago when I had right. a motorcycle wreck, there was a piece of metal in my arm. It was not a hard fall, but what happens when you can't catch yourself, I guess I came down straight on that elbow. The bone, the metal's not gonna break. The bone did. Yeah. All right, now let's look back. <laughs> okay, look at Nikki just a few months ago. Okay, then here's Nikki a few months before that with her hand. All right, should we tell them the real story? I'd like to hear the real story. You know the real story. <laughs> There's a branch of NASA that not a lot of people know about. It's under, right. the, it's under the Department of, well, I can't even say it, it's top secret. Big word. But we test drive experimental aircraft, and sometimes things don't work out so well. Okay, now, I wish that was the case, but the case is we've just had uh, a bad couple years. We need bubble wrap, somebody said. Well, we yeah, or a tank to travel in. <laughs> but nevertheless, we thank you so much for every, when you got hurt, when I got hurt. Thank you so much for caring. Now, here's the deal. I'm in severe pain. But I'm taking no medication for it. Guess what I'm doing? Staying we're, busy. We're getting busy. That's right. And speaking of getting busy, I have had to sit still. Now, part about this whole process, like you, for why right. you couldn't do anything with, right. your, with your neck, I had to sit still. I had to sit so still that one time I was upstairs and she dusted right <laughs> over top of me. Didn't even know I was there. That's because I, I clean so good. She cleans so good. Yeah. So the other day we were sitting here and we started talking about seafood. Mm -hmm. And once you start talking about things like that, Gotta have it. you can't get it out of your mind. A guy named Tony Shaw, saw him on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. he, he asked to be my friend on LinkedIn, signed up, and I looked at it where he worked. So we decided to check out this place, River House Restaurant and Raw Bar. Mm. Of course, we got the tower. <laughs> it's we delicious. Had to, we had to get all, yeah, our, the, all the stuff. The oysters, tastes Amazing. like they just pulled them out of the bay somewhere. They had West Coast, East Coast, so on and so forth. If you want real, fresh, wonderful seafood, I would suggest dining there. It was amazing. So let's check out a recipe and a drink, then we're gonna come back with a, well, it's a semi-healthy snack. Yeah, it can, be real, good. it can be real healthy if you leave a couple things out. Or, right. you, or you can add some stuff and make it a decadent. <laughs> That's right. Let's go find some seafood. Tony Shaw. Yes, sir. We're in Louisville today. Mm -hmm. Tell us exactly where we are and the directions to get here for those who might not know. Uh, we're at River House Restaurant and Raw Bar. Uh, we're just off I-71 South. Uh, you take exit 7, the Zorn Avenue exit. Uh, you take a right off the exit, make a right on River Road. On the left-hand side, we're right there. Right here. Yeah. Okay, now, we hooked up through social media. Mm -hmm. We meet all kinds of people through there. You said, hey, I work at this restaurant. I'm like, Raw Bar? Yeah. You got my attention right yeah. there. So we came on out spontaneously had dinner last night. And let me tell you what, knocked our socks off. All right, we had to start out with a raw bar. Mm -hmm. I got the ahi, she got the scallops, and wow. Yeah. That's all I got to say about that. All right, tell us about the interior and the exterior. If you want to eat outside during the summertime, yeah. what have you got here? Well, the interior, this used to be Fall City Boat Works. It was a boat dealership uh, way back in the day. And uh, John, uh, over the years, you know, he's always wanted to do something on the river. Right. Um, he had the opportunity to do so, so this year we were able to do it. So this was actually the showroom where all the new boats uh, used to be. So 
Um, you know, it's got the great space, got the great view. We've got a 4,000 square foot patio. Uh, we put in eight boat docks uh, last July. Uh, we're increasing the patio space this summer, um, and just, we're just going to make it as fun as possible for all of our boat in, boaters. All right, now today, uh, last night, I had what was, I think you called it the 10 cup old fashioned. That's correct, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. What are you going to make us today? Uh, today we're doing, going to do the Cardinal Sin. Um, okay. It's kind of a riff on a Boulevard A and a Negroni. Um, base for it is going to be Maker's Mark 46, uh, which is, I think, uh, just a, a top quality uh, bourbon. You can't really go wrong with that. Uh, we have Bombay Gin. Uh, then we have Chinar, which is an Italian, Italian herbal liqueur. And then we have Noli Pratt Sweet Vermouth. Gotcha. Let's do this. Okay. We can do that. It's going to be served up um, like a any type of martini or Manhattan, so not on the rocks, up in a martini glass. And uh, we're going to stir it. Uh, we love the texture when it comes to stirring. You don't want to shake it uh, whatsoever. So gotcha. uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take an ounce of the uh, Maker's Mark 46. All right. Good way to start right. things. Yeah. Very good. And then we're going to do a half ounce of the Bombay Gin. Gotcha. This, this is a Nikki drink. I bet you she'd really like this. So it's definitely, um, you focus on the classics, like I said, the um, Negroni and the Boulevard A. Uh, we just want to put like a little bit of a twist on it, so that's kind of gotcha. what we did. So um, you just want to stir this for maybe about 30 seconds or 30, 30 stirs. You don't want to over dilute it, but you just want to get it nice and cold and make sure everything mixes together properly. And then you just want to uh, gently just strain into a martini glass. And we're going to do a little dash of uh, orange bitters to finish. Gotcha. Yeah, you really can't go wrong. I mean, we definitely want to make sure you get the full experience from, you know, the raw bar to our appetizers to our entrees to definitely dessert. You know, John, uh, our owner, uh, he does a fantastic job. So, all right. And then you're just going to finish with lemon twists right in there. That's an evening drink. Mm -hmm. That's a with dinner drink. What, what, what situation would you find that? Oh, goodness. Uh, it could be an after work drink, after, you know, a any type of day drink, uh, before dinner, after dinner. Uh, I think it fits almost any occasion. So. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Well, we've had our before dinner drink. I guess now it's time to go to the kitchen. Sounds good. Do you have any idea what's on the menu today? Uh, I think I do, and I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Mm. What is it? It's going to be our grouper cheeks and shrimp. Yeah. Raj almost had me talked into that last night, but I saw the ahi had to go there. Can't yeah. wait to try this. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Tim. Uh -huh. John. Hey, how are you doing? We're in the kitchen. We had Best you? place to be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But what are you going to make for us today? Well, I got something really different here. We're doing our seared grouper cheeks and shrimp over our crab risotto with a smoked shrimp vinaigrette uh, on top. It's really delicious. And grouper cheeks, is, cheeks meat in general is just underutilized. You know, people usually just discard it and they're wonderful. They have a different texture to it. They're a little sweeter. And it's just something different that people don't see every day. So I almost got that's that what I night. enjoy doing. I want to create new experiences and create uh, memories too. All right, walk us through this. How, how's this thing going to work? Now I've taken uh, some of the rice here. We have it part cooked, and you can do that ahead of time in the house to uh, make dinner process happen a little quicker. You know, that's always a a great thing to happen at home. You don't want to spend all day slaving over the stove and cooking. And we just want to add the last bit of liquid so the rice becomes tender and al dente. The part of the risotto, too, is that we're stirring it, releasing the starches, making it nice and creamy. We're going to add some heavy cream and also a little bit of cream cheese. So while that's going to be reducing uh, lightly, here we have our group of cheeks. Talk about what a cheek is. A lot of, a lot of people aren't familiar with that. So it's actually the cheek meat, the face cheek, these. And uh, as you can see, the um, nice meat has a little different striation here. Uh, a lot of people says it has the texture of crab. So it's a little sweeter, uh, I think very flavorful. And again, just a very underutilized uh, piece of the fish. You know when you catch a big walleye here in Kentucky, a lot of people forget about that meat. Yeah, you know, no, I always, any, anytime I have uh, fresh fish or we're breaking down fresh fish, I always take the collars of the throats out of them. We call it the pork chop of the fish, the bone in. It uh, has a lot of great flavor and extra flavor, just like a, a bone in pork chop. It's going to add extra flavor to it. And again, it has that little different texture. And, you know, that's kind of part of, you know, being a chef and utilizing everything and 
in the kitchen and all your product. All right, our risotto is getting nice and creamed out here. Show for the camera, it's like nice and fluffy. At this point, we could uh, add our lump crab, some scallions for a little color, a little bite, a little flavor, a little texture. So the grouper cheeks, we just add a little flour to it. We're trying to add some texture to it. So you're gonna have the nice creaminess of the cheek inside. You're gonna have the crispy on the outside. Important part of sauteing too is to make sure that your pan's hot, the oil's hot before you put anything into it because that's why you get sticking problems. Uh, people don't realize that at home. Uh, let's see, it's a little bit of flame catching in there. So I wanted to pull it away from the heat so the water's not gonna catch the fire there. Uh, we put some of our golf, uh, jumbo golf shrimp in. Again, we just want to get a nice little sear on there. We're almost done. We're going to flip our shrimp. And we're going to cook this for another minute or so. I'm going to turn it on low and let it finish. And we're going to come over here and make our very flavorful uh, shrimp vinaigrette. We started off our emulsifier. The egg yolk really helps the uh, oil to bind. So we have our protein and our fats. So scientifically, when you mix it together, you create air and the protein grabs onto the fat molecule, which makes an emulsified uh, dressing that we're making here. So we start with the egg yolk, adding some apple vinegar. We need a little bit of acid in there that adds that tang. And of course, another little bit of acid, we're putting some lemon juice in. And then we have our base. I've already went ahead and roasted some tomatoes and onions. And we really want a nice little char in there that's gonna add some flavor. Uh, this is also gonna help with the emulsification base. A little fresh basil. And then again, for our flavor, we've got some heat and smokiness with our uh, chipotle and adobo sauce. All right, this is gonna get a little noisy, but uh, we wanna puree this smooth. We got our Vita prep here. We're gonna start off on a low setting here just to get everything pureed together. And then we're going to turn it high. You want it high to get an opportunity to create that air so you're achieving the emulsification. So the trick of doing this is not pouring your oil in too fast. You want to get that steady little stream. If you add it too fast, you're going to get uh, the vinaigrette breaking. So uh, that happens when you introduce too much fat in here at one time. So adding this slowly is going to make it nice and creamy. And the other part about this, I like it that it evenly distributes the flavor. So we're gonna turn this down a little bit now. Add some salt and pepper in here for flavoring. And our vinaigrette's basically done. Here we have some uh, other smaller shrimp that we're just gonna chop up and add into the vinaigrette. Uh, we've uh, smoked it with a little bit of bourbon barrels that we get from our local, local distilleries. So we're gonna add the shrimp in here. So now to put it all together, we got our wonderful creamy crab risotto. Nice generous helping in there. Oh, that's so good. It's making me hungry right now, just smelling it. I'm gonna place our grouper cheeks and shrimp over the top. Just make a nice little mound, very plentiful. I gotta tell you, my mouth's water. <laughs> it really is water right now. And then we'll just drizzle some of the smoked chipotle vinaigrette on top. Again, it's going to add a lot of different uh, flavor depth. Uh, here with the dish, too, we like to do a little sauteed uh, baby bok choy. Vegetables that a little medley here. Do I have your permission to dig in? Oh, yes, please. Right, I'm going to start with this cheek right over here. Uh, you see how tender that was. You know, I gotta get a little, trying to get a little bit of everything in there. That's the whole thing, you know. It's all the flavors are, are meant to be eaten together. If you eat it separately, you don't quite get the whole experience. Did you miss out last night? Mm. I'm getting so much there. I'm getting just a little bit, just a little bit of spice. Not anything overwhelming. No, it's not too hot. That fish is so fresh. And like you said, it has almost a different, almost, almost a crab-like quality. Wow, nice combo. 
Well, I enjoy sharing. sharing. You know, that's what this what we I do. enjoy learning from you. I have another fantastic place to eat. I can't wait till summertime to get out here and pull my boat up. Oh, it's going to be great out there. And it's, have it's beautiful. You've got a fantastic thing going here. Don't stop. We'll be back. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. If you have a chance to get up and check them out, I can't imagine in the summertime what it's going to be like to pull oh, up on yeah. the dock and eat up there. How fun. Good stuff. Now, as I have been sitting around gathering dust, mm -hmm. I decided to experiment and play around, and we've always dehydrated stuff. We're going to do some jerky later, but we wanted to make a quick and easy trail mix. So what we've done, and the house has smelled wonderful the last couple of days, right. the temperature on the dehydrator is between 135 and 145. Let's turn it off. We put in some apples. And, and they're just delicious. Cut these. And you can't imagine, for some reason, that smells like you my, take them off? my grandma parrot's house. Now what we're gonna do here is just make a little batch of trail apples. mix. We did some pineapple. Some Those are good pineapple. too. Now remember, you're dehydrating this stuff. So it's gonna shrink up. Now, I really wanted a lot of bananas in mine. <laughs> So look what we've got here. And this all went about 24 hours. Yeah, and don't think yeah. this is gonna happen in, in five or six minutes. This is a long process. You can do you some uh, blueberries, but really, really plan on some time for your blueberries. Those so look, are a couple look, days yeah. for those. So look what we've got here. This is ours. Now we did a few on the side, just to see how it works. Some mangoes, mm -hmm. we did some figs, we did some apricots. But really what I wanted in my mix, what I like in my mix, bananas, blueberries, pineapple, and apples. It makes it so sweet too. It brings out the sweet. Exactly. Now this is all organic. We're going to add mm. some almonds and some cashews. You see my candy? I guess. And if you want another one, <laughs> of course you had to have the chocolate and the candy. And this, so let's go ahead and put that in a little bag. See the reds? It's because it's Valentine's coming up. Ah. Mm -hmm. Already thinking about Valentine's Day. Well, let's see what that's going to look like. Now this is this is so simple, so easy, and dehydrators are not that expensive, and you can use them for so many things. If you wanted to store some of this, shake it up. So what's the shelf life? What would you guess the shelf life? I don't know. Life what is the shelf life? I don't know. If you put it in a cool, dry place, up to a year. Really? Now a lot I of times, if you wanted to take, now this is going to for immediate, you know, immediate consumption. You'll eat this that's, tomorrow. That's not going to last. Yeah, you'll long. eat it tomorrow. But we know where it came from. We know that there's nothing in it. Some of these, be careful. Look at some of the stuff you buy. Some of the fruit is from. Places we've never heard of, right. we have no idea what it's been sprayed with, so on and so forth. We know exactly what we have here. Now, you know we're country. We can't help it. We don't apologize for it. In fact, we're proud of it. But we love to hear country stories. And there's almost nobody I know that can tell a country story better than Byron Crawford. I agree. So every now and then we have a little segment called Country Memories. Let's hmm. visit with our friend Byron and let's talk about Fences. A good many years ago, I wrote a story about my affection for old fence rows. One of the first things I remember my father teaching me was how to cross a woven wire fence. He took time explaining it how to climb at the post so as to not break the fence down, how to pick a post that was solid and straight, make sure the steeples that held the wire were tight. He showed me in some detail where to put my hands and feet and how to avoid tearing the seat out of my pants on the strand of barbed wire across the top. Then and there, I took to fence crossing with enthusiasm. For a person with short legs, I was good at it. I never ran into a fence I couldn't cross until electric fences came along. Naturally given to exploring and possessing a gift for piddling, I roamed the countryside near and far in the early days of a boyhood infatuation that finally grew into a lifelong love affair with old fence rows. They still call to me from the interstates and back roads that I travel, and it saddens me to see one bulldozed and burned. At a distance, I know they are not pretty, but up close, hidden in the tangle of vines, bushes, trees, weathered gray posts, and rusty wire, old fence rows are intrinsically charming and likable. 
Finally, no tribute to Fence Rose would be complete without mention of Honeysuckle, the mother of all sweet fragrances, the Chanel No. 5 of old Fence Rose, the whisper of everyone you've ever loved, the line in every song that made you cry, the essence of every sunset and moonrise you've ever wanted to paint. Sometimes when I pass an old fence row blanketed with honeysuckle, I wish I was back there again just learning to cross the fence. I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And, and we're, we're the, the Moron, Moron Brothers. Brother. Got a frog in my throat. I remember as a boy having one a money and joy. I'd walk the train till he go by. With the whistles on the sand, he'd hear miles around. It's a road across the Greenville Trestle High. But whistles don't sound like they used to. Lately, not many trains go by. Hard times cross this land, me no work for the railroad man. And the Greenville Trestle now don't seem to hide big ones. Bank, I'd stand with a cane pole in my hand Watch the freight trains up against the sky With the black folk trading back It's moved along the track That road across the Greenville Trestle High But the whistles don't sound like they used to Lately not many trains go by Our time across this land Be no work for the railroad man and the Greenville trails are now don't seem to hide. Went along some whistles wine, I get rambling on my mind. Thought we see she sounded that way. At the turn I head for home, she rumbled along into the sunset at the close of the day. But the whistles don't sound like they used to. Lately, not many trains go by. Hard time across this land, me no work for the railroad man. And the Greenville Trails are now don't seem to hide. Now the Greenville Trails are now don't seem to hide. All right, now it's one of those all moments. Look who's getting big. Hi, baby. Murphy is baby. getting stout, and he's also smart. He's I'm not going to tell anybody that, but you're a smart cat. No. And he's sweet. Now, here's the deal. At about six months, I'm going to start his training. Now, I used to train hard-headed English pointers. He is already so smart, it's unbelievable. So he's I smart. cannot wait to start the training process. You're going to be right there with us. We're going to help, have him round up sheep. But in the meanwhile, if you have not seen some of our shows, hundreds and hundreds of shows, I suggest you check out timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Look at our shows on YouTube. There are many, many, many shows there for you to look at. Recipes, all kinds of stuff. We're going to get back up and on our feet and rolling here very shortly. We had to take a little break again. He smells food. He smells food. <laughs> but also, look at our Facebook page. Like it. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Like our Facebook page. We like talking to our friends on there, sharing ideas, talking about all kinds of stuff. And Murphy, no, you're not the least bit cute. So uh, let's close the show. It's all about good times, good friends, and good eat. And let's watch him go crazy for just a minute. You want to go close. crazy? Let's go crazy. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.
Special thanks to CKY Canoe Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm, 